Welcome along to the fourth installment of our video series where we are learning how to create a maze game in Scratch. Now what we're going to be doing in this video is adding in some collectible items. So these blue crystals and this purple crystal. And when we collect them, we get some points added to our score up the top here. Let me give you an example of how it works. So as we move around, you'll see that when I get this blue crystal, we get one point added to our score. It disappears to make it look like we've collected it. And you also hear a noise, a positive noise to show that you've done the right thing. So I've got that last one. So when we go over to this purple one, he's actually a little bit more unique and will earn you double the points. Oh, triple the points actually. You'll get three, sorry, three points for collecting the purple gems. When you're done, go to the next level and you'll see all three blue crystals reappear as does the purple one and they all pop up in new locations. And it's not that difficult to code up, there's just a fair bit of code to do so. So let's jump over to Scratch and pick up where we left off in the previous video. Okay, so this is how your game should be looking at the moment. We've got Pico, we've got the maze drawn, we've got the portal. What we need to do now is add in a crystal. So go down to your sprites list here, choose a sprites and just quickly scroll down and find the crystal sprite. You might have seen then as I hovered over it, it's got two costumes. We are just sticking with the blue one for the time being. Okay, so the crystal that comes in, I want you to rename to crystal one. We're actually gonna have three crystals, but let's just start with crystal one for the time being and just move it up into its start position. So where do you want it to be in level one? I want mine to go there. You can put yours anywhere, but that is gonna be where my first one goes. Now, before I start coding, there's a few things I wanna do. Uh, first of all, over in variables, I wanna make a new variable up that is gonna hold the value of our score. So just call this variable score, leave for all sprites selected and click OK. And you'll see now you get a variable that says score. When it comes in, I do want to actually leave it in that top left hand corner, but you'll see it's overlapping over the top of Pico there. So I'm just going to need to go to Pico and look at the first little block of code that has his starting position. I'm just going to have to move that Y value down a little bit. So I might make it about 120. And when I press the green flag now, he starts just below that score panel. Okay, so that's looking good. Our score is set to zero, which is good. But if we run our game, collect one of these guys, and then restart our game, our score will be going up and up and up each time we play the game. So we're going to have to go to our controller sprite here and make sure that every time we start our game, we set our score to zero. Okay. That way our score won't keep continuing on from the previous times we played our game. It starts fresh every time we start um, a new game. Okay, so I think we are ready to begin coding our blue crystal up. So head over to crystal one. And the first thing I'd like you to do is set the coordinates for this crystal on level one. So where should it appear when it starts um, the game? So go to your events and drag out when the green flag is clicked. And under motion, we have go to X and Y. And its current X and Y coordinates are what you see here. So that is going to be its starting position when we begin our game. Perfect. Next thing I want to code up is what happens when Pico runs into the crystal. So we need to do an if then statement for that. And we need to work out if we're touching Pico. So if the crystal is touching Pico, what do we want to happen? Well, the first thing I want to do is play a sound. Now, this crystal already comes with the collect sound loaded in. And that's the sound we want to play when we collect the crystal. So go to sound and choose start sound collect. Next thing we're going to do is go to variables and we're going to change our score, not our level. We're going to change our score by one. So we'll get one point each time we collect the crystal. And then I want the crystal to hide. Simple as that. Okay, so it makes it look like we've collected it. It will disappear once we run into it. Uh, by hiding the crystals, it probably also means you need to re make them reappear in our page at some stage. So we might put that show in at the very start there. Okay, so when we start our game, we make sure the crystal is showing on the page and it goes to those set coordinates. Then if we're touching Pico, um, we play the sound that we've collected the gem. We add one to our score and then we hide that little crystal. We just need to wrap a forever loop around this to make sure the computer is always listening out and waiting for us to touch that crystal. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's give that a test run. We'll move Pico with our arrow keys around to the crystal. 
There's a few things, remember, when we collect this, we should hear a sound, we should get a point added to our score, and the crystal should disappear. And it's done all of those things. The crystal's gone, we heard a sound, we had one point added to our score. Okay, we press the green flag again. We've made the crystal reappear in those coordinates. Okay, that is working well. That's for level one. Remember, we've got two more levels, though, that we want this crystal to reappear in. And to do that, a little bit confusing, what we need to do is we actually need to broadcast a message out to all the sprites that we are changing to a new level. Okay, so we're going to have to go back over to Pico to do this. And just look through your code on Pico, because we've got quite a bit of it. Look for this one down here. It's the one that says um, what happens if we are on level one and we're touching the portal, or if we're on level two and touching the portal, or level three and touching the portal. Okay, we're going to need to add a message in here. So I'm going to go to events and I'm going to broadcast game over. Drag that little block of code out and I'm going to drop it in the first if statement right at the bottom of that one. So just under those go to X and Y coordinates. And instead of broadcasting game over, we're going to broadcast a new message called new level. Okay, it's just going to let all the sprites know that we are changing to a new level. And I want you to duplicate that little yellow block of code and put it in the if statement below as well. Okay, so if we're on level 2 and we touch the portal, then do all these things and also broadcast a message that we're heading over to the next level, which is going to be level 3 and the final level. They're the only two times we need to actually broadcast that new level message. Okay, so we can go back to our crystal now and code up the new positions. Okay, in level 2 and level 3. So in backdrops, I just want you to go to the backdrops tab and choose your second level here so the galaxy one and go back to the crystal and choose code so we're going to add in some code now where do we want this crystal to be displayed in level two so the first block you drag out is when i receive not game over but new level so when i receive that message that we are switching levels the first thing i want to do is i want to show this crystal okay because remember if we collect it it will be hidden so the first thing I want to do when we go to the new level is show the crystal again. And then we need to just ask the question, are we going to level 2 or level 3? So if level equals 2, then where do we want to position this crystal? So if we're going to level 2, we are going to go to... Let's work out where we want to put this crystal first. I might, oh, I might leave it just near there. Actually, in that little slot there looks pretty good. So those coordinates, minus 94 and 89 is what we can see here. So there are our coordinates for what happens in level two. I'm going to duplicate that little if statement now. And I'm going to do it for level three. So let's change our backdrop first of all over here to the moon. And just go back to our code on the crystal. And we're going to have to change these X and Y coordinates in a moment. So take that block out. Move your crystal to where you want it to start. So I'm going to go about there. Okay, and I'm going to drag in the new X and Y coordinates and drop them in here. So if we're on level 3, which is the moon one, I want it to go to X and Y coordinates of that and that, which is that position right there. And I'm going to snap that in underneath there. Okay, so that should have our crystal looking pretty good. The last thing, if we're on level 4, I want that crystal to disappear. If it hasn't been collected, I want it to just disappear off the page altogether, so just hide it. So under events, bring out the message that says when I receive game over. So when I get that broadcaster message that the game is over, go to looks and simply hide it. Easy as that. Let's give it a test run. So I'm going to go through all three levels here. I'm going to cheat a bit. I'm just going to drag Pico around. So we've got the first crystal. You can see it reappears in its new position up here and then reappears again in its new position there. I'm not going to collect this one, so I actually want to see what happens when I finish the game to see if that does disappear. Yeah, it does, so it got that broadcaster message to say the game was over and it just hit itself off the page. Okay, when we start the game again, it should show itself as it did. Perfect. So that's one crystal, all done. What we need to do now is the other two crystals. And we can actually cheat a little bit here because the code is very similar. We can actually duplicate the entire code from this crystal and put it onto a second crystal. The only thing that needs changing are these blue boxes that show the X and Y positions. 
we want to make sure our crystals are going to different locations. Okay, so I'm going to right click on crystal one here and I'm going to duplicate it. And you'll see crystal two appears. If you actually click on crystal two, it'll highlight. Just watch this carefully. I'll just click on it again. And that shows you that, that is crystal two right there. Okay, so if we are on level one, which is these coordinates here, we're going to change them. We're going to put this crystal, let's say, down here. So it's got new coordinates, 126 for the X value. And for the Y value, it's minus 145. Okay, so when we start our game now, we've got a crystal starting here. We've got a crystal starting there. Let's go to level 2. So go to your backdrops, go to level 2, and back to your code and crystal 2. Click on crystal 2 to make sure you know which one it is, and you can see it highlighting down here. Move it to where you want it to go in level 2. So I might put it down here. And I'm going to change these coordinates, the X and Y coordinates, under level 2. And they need to match these X and Y coordinates here. So it needs to be minus 28 and minus 153. Okay, so now I can run level 1. They're in the right position. If I go to level 2, we've got two crystals now appearing in the right positions. So I just needed to sort out level 3 now. Okay, so I might just cheat here and just go to level 3. Now, both crystals, I believe, are on top of each other at the moment. So actually we might have to drag one off the other. Yeah, there we go. So crystal 2 is this one here. Where do you want him to go? So I might put that crystal, might hide him over here. So on crystal 2, here's the new set of coordinates, 201 and 61. Done. So that's that. Level 1 looks good. Oops. Level 1 looks good. Level 2 looks good. Level 3 looks good. So all our crystals so far are in the right position and they disappear on level 4. So we just need to do this for one more crystal. We right click, duplicate. We've got crystal 3 now. So I'm just going to go back to level 1 here. And crystal 3 is over here sitting on top of crystal 2 at the moment. So. Let's change these X and Y coordinates for the very first um, level. Oops, I just moved crystal three. Can I undo that? No. Nope. We'll put crystal two back. So crystal three here, this one here. Where do I want him to go? I'm going to put him right out of the way up here. So it's a bit of a challenge for the user to get to him. Um, so those coordinates there for X and Y on level one. So 146. And 159 is where I want it to go. So when I press the green flag, we've got our three crystals now in position. Let's go to level two and work out where we want this third crystal to go. Um, I might put him up here. That's pretty well spread out. So for level two, that's going to be 60 for the X value, 156 for the Y. Okay, let's run that again. So, whoops. Level 1, looking good. Level 2, looking good. Now on level 3, where's our third one? He's over here. Might put him down in that corner there. So change your level 3 coordinates for crystal 3 to match these. 164 and minus 155. That should be it. So that's looking good. Oops, that's looking good. That's looking good. So we've got our three blue crystals all sorted. Easy. Now I'm going to duplicate crystal three one more time here, but I'm going to change a few things around. It's going to look a little bit different. Not by much though. So duplicate it and we get crystal four. I want you to go to the costume of crystal four and I'm just going to get you to delete the blue one, trash it, and we're left with the purple one. Now the purple guy comes out a little bit big for my liking, so just drop its size maybe to 80%. That's not too bad. Not a bad size there at 80%, so we'll leave it at that. And we're going to go back to level 1. So at the moment, Crystal 4 is hiding at the top there. We need to move him. Uh, I'm just going to put him over here. Okay, so those new coordinates for level 1 are minus 192 and minus 102. 
One thing I want to change here is the score. So when we click the purple gem, we want to get three points, not one point. So just change the score by three now. And if we go to level two, we need to reposition him. So I'm going to position this guy maybe down. Actually, let's put him up in this corner. That looks good. So for level two, the coordinate will be 210, 148. I'm getting those coordinates, remember, from just over here. It's current position. That's good. And then for level three, if I just move Pico over to the, uh, the portal. Okay, let's move him. Oh, where can we put it? Maybe just... I'll put it here. Oh, actually, no. Where can I stick it? I'll just put it up here. That'll do. It doesn't really matter. So the coordinates, 39 and 124. Okay, we'll give that a run, just make sure we've got the purple one starting in the right position there. Whoops. Level 2, it's up there. Let's make sure I can collect it. I can, and I get 3 points for collecting it, which is good. And level 3, there it is there. So, perfect. They're all collectible, and it doesn't appear in the final level either. So that's our crystals all working and looking pretty good. Um, so what have we got left to add now? we just got the griffin to add next, which is the bad guy. Okay, so we'll add an enemy into our game to make it a little bit harder to actually collect these gems and get to the portal. And once we've got that in, I reckon our maze game will be almost finished. So I'll catch you in the next video where we start to add in an enemy.